How you guys doing? Good, good. Um, I want to ask you guys a question, okay? Uh, we're going to be talking about success, okay? When I say the word success, okay, how do you interpret that? What does success mean to you? Money, okay. What else? Happiness. Oh, that's a first. You know, I've been here. Uh, I've done this two times so far. Nobody said happiness. Uh, what else? A sense of accomplishment. Joy, freedom. Oh, I like freedom. Freedom's big. Freedom's huge. And that's what we're going to be talking about. A lifestyle that you desire. See, to me, how I define success is where I'm at right now and gaining to, to my potential. Okay? Uh, when I first came down to Florida, I was in a mixed uh, MMA uh, fighting, uh, mixed martial arts fighting. And uh, that's what got me down here. I was in Colorado. I uh, n didn't have any dreams of coming down to the Sunshine State, but they had some really good uh, uh, MMA uh, schools down here. So I did that for a couple of years. Then uh, I started my, started my own company. And I was really upset because back in uh, 2006, I was making $30,000 a year. Okay, $30,000 a year. That's how much I was making in 2006. I was really angry about that because it wasn't my potential. Where I was, where I wanted to be. So I was pissed, right? Get angry. I was getting angry because when Christmas would come, I didn't have any money to uh, buy gifts for people. So I was really upset about that. I was angry. So how many of you believe, or actually, how many of you when you get out of here and when you graduate, you want to make just enough money in your life to stay broke? Right? Anybody have that plan? There's a lot of people on that plan though, right? You know, how, how many people you know that are they're broke? In your family even, right? People that are broke. Oh, we don't have money for that. We don't have money for this. We don't have money for that. How many people you know that uh, limit themselves to where even where they eat, right? Think about this. We can eat at that restaurant and that restaurant, but we could never go to that restaurant and that restaurant. Only on special occasions maybe but we can never eat there. We limit ourselves by the amount of food, where, where we eat, what we drive, where we live, based upon what? How much money we have, right? So I wanna talk a little bit, of, this is gonna be a two-part talk. Gonna be talking about uh, money, finance, financial success, and then I'm gonna be talking about um, the, the job market and so forth, but you're gonna get a lot out of this, I promise you. When I, when I was thinking about what I wanted to say to you guys, you know, I said to myself, you know, um, what would I tell myself at 18? 37 years old now, what would I tell myself if I was 18? Do it all over again and not make the mistakes. So I'm literally talking to myself here, okay? I had a, my grandmother, uh, she passed away, but she was a very successful woman. She owned a, uh, a real estate company in Ohio. She, she was like a walking meme, man. I mean, she had like advice. I mean, she would like spit things off that were like gold. You know, she'd say things like, you need to write your goals down. I said, why, Grandma? She said, because you can't hit a target you can't see. you got to be able to define these things. And uh, my, my mother used to say, if the economy's doing well, then you're going to be doing well. If the economy's doing poorly, then you're going to be doing poorly. How many of you heard that your income is determined by the economy? How many of you have heard that? If the economy's strong, your money's strong. If the economy's weak, then you're weak, right? You're financially weak. I don't believe that at all. I see, I believe that your income is determined by your philosophy. How many people want to own their own business one day? Boom. Thank you. Man, I knew they had some entrepreneurs in here. It's okay. For the rest of you, man, it's okay. Because uh, the job market is, we need you. Without, without you, there's no us. <laughs> my, grand, my, my grandmother used to say things like this. You know, my, my mother, my mother, I love my mom. But, uh, you know, she, just because she's my mom doesn't mean she dreams like me. Wouldn't you agree? Right. Right? Do your parents dream like no. you? No. Right? No. Right? No. You know, the truth is, uh, the truth is, guys, um, how many of you ever heard this? This is going to be one quote that will change your life today. You're going to be the same. Listen to this. Listen. You're going to be the same person you are today five years from now except for two things. The people you meet and the books you read. The people you meet and the books you read. Think about that. Think about that for a second. Is there one problem in your or my life that the answer to it can't be found in a book somewhere? I'll give you an example. Let's say you got a spiritual problem. There's the Bible. Let's say you want to make money. 
There's books on finance. You say you want to play the stock market. Are there any books on Wall Street? Yeah, there's a ton of books on Wall Street. How, let's say you want to get focused. I mean, how do I focus? All right, I get distracted so easily. How do I stay focused? There are books on goal setting, time management, what to do, how to do it, the nuts and bolts of how to micromanage your time. There's a book out there for everything. How to get a job, what to say in a resume, what to put on a resume, how to stand out, how to, you know, how to, how to be present in the moment, right? Think, is there one problem in your life that you can think of that the answer to it, is, there isn't, uh, the answer to it can't be found in a book, right? The answer, whenever I go to Barnes & Noble, I got a cup of coffee in my hand, and I go into the business section, and I'm looking for my next million. I'm looking for titles, right, on the shelf. I'm like, where's my next million coming from? Where is it at? Where is it at? Oh, I like that. I like that. Where are the nuts and bolts? What do I, what do I got to do to get where I want to be? Remember? Talking about where I'm at currently to where I want to be. So back in 2006, I was making $30,000 a year and I was angry because didn't have enough money. 18 months later, I went from $30,000 a year to $247,000 a year. Okay, 18 months. That's all it took. Think about that, right? Think about that. 20, a little, uh, little over $20,000 a month. Just like that. 18 months. Wasn't a lot of time. It was quick. How'd I do it? Books, people, you know, because I had to really shift my thinking because just like you, how many of you heard when you were growing up, don't talk to strangers? Don't talk to strangers. Strangers, stay away from strangers. You know what? That's bad advice because strangers have everything that I want. Okay. St think about this because since I own uh, I own three companies and so what I, I what I have to do as a business owner I have to move out of my company go out into the marketplace and bring money in to my bank account so that literally means I have to go talk to strangers I have to go meet people that don't know me don't know anything about me don't know anything that I have to offer them and I have to sell them so I want to talk about selling for uh, for example all of us are in sales Aaron's in sales all of us are in sales I don't know if you know that or not that you're a sales person but we're all salespeople I'll give you an example if you're in a relationship with somebody boyfriend girlfriend you sold that other person on being in a relationship with you right we're all in sales if you work for somebody you sold an employer on hiring you right right <laughs> my daughter she came up to me this morning she's three years old she came up to me and she said daddy I want some bubble gum I said baby you know you can't have bubble gum until you eat your breakfast. You know that. She goes, that's not fair. I said, life ain't fair. Life's not fair. How many of you know life's not fair? Life is going to be really, really bad for a lot of people, pretty good for a little bit amount of people, and even less people have a great life. So life is really unfair for a lot of people, good for a few, and even less get everything that they want, right? How many would you agree? How many of you would agree with that, right? Your income is not determined by the economy. Your income is determined by your philosophy, how you think, how you think. See, a lot of people, they run away from problems. They're like, oh man, there's too many problems. There's too many problems out there and they run away from it. That's the majority of the people. So they see problems, they run away. I see problems and I see problems. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all these opportunities. Look at all these opportunities to fix things that are wrong. Now here's the deal, folks, right? The bigger the problems that you solve for other people determine the size of your paycheck. Ooh, that's good. The bigger the problems that you solve for other people determine the size of your paycheck. I'll give you an example. I was having a plumbing problem the, uh, a few months ago. I went to flush the toilet. Water wouldn't go down. All of a sudden, water's coming up. I shut the valve off, get a plunger. It's not going down. Now, all of a sudden, I got water coming up out of my sinks in the bathtub, and I'm like, oh, man, I need, a, I need a plumber. So I call a plumber. Plumber says, you got a problem? I got a solution for you, sir. $1,000. And I'm like, okay. He came out there. He drove up in his big, beautiful truck. He was there about 15, 20 minutes, and I wrote him a check for $1,000. 15 minutes of work. $1,000. Not a bad 15 minutes. The bigger the problem that you solve for other people determines the size of your paycheck. Okay? A lot of people, now, now that's my entrepreneurial pitch, okay? Entrepreneurials love this part. I want to talk to people that are going to go out and get a job. Okay? You're going to love this. You're going to love this. 
guy, there's a guy in my church. Um, he says, man, I'm having trouble finding work. You know, I can't find work out there. He goes, I've been to three places, two, three places, and no one's hiring. I said, wait a minute, you've been to two or three places, and you said no one's hiring out of the two or three. I said, why don't you go to 10? Why don't you go to 15 places? He goes, ah, these are the places I really want to work. I said, okay, I, that's fine. I said, well, how, do you want, how, do, how are you marketing yourself when you go in there? He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, how are you marketing yourself when you go in for the job interview? He says, uh, well, I wear, I wear clothes. You know, I'm like, that, that, dude, well, of course you're wearing clothes, man. What are, you going naked? what are you going in naked? I said, of course you're wearing clothes. I said, what are you going in? <laughs> how are you marketing yourself? He says, uh, well, I don't know what you mean. I said, you know what I do when I'm trying to uh, land a client? is I bring him a gift. I brought this one guy a while back. I, I bought, went and bought a Louisville baseball bat from a secondhand store. It cost me 75 cents. I came in there and I put it on the desk. I said, hey, I brought you a gift. He's like, what's with the bat? I said, because I want to knock it out of the park with you. That's why I'm here. He's like, oh, that's good. That's good. Another guy was uh, trying to uh, land this client. His name was Ross Suddeth from Suddeth Moving Company. Uh, runs the largest moving truck company in the nation. They got semis all over the place, big moving company. I called him on the phone. I was like, hey, Ross, Dave Canigliaro, can you meet me, uh, can you meet me for breakfast? I want to show you something. He says, I'm not interested. I, I, can't, I can't meet with you. I said, can you meet me for uh, lunch? He said, no. I said, can you meet me for dinner? He said, okay. So I, he came out to dinner with me. And I went over to Big Lots, and I got a salad chopper, one of these salad choppers. I, I wrapped it up. I said, hey, Ross, I got you a gift. He's sitting across the table from me. He opens it up. I said, Ross, do you know what this is? He goes, a salad chopper? I said, Ross, do you know why I got you a salad chopper? He says, because uh, you think I'm fat and I need to eat salads? I said, no, baby, because I want to slice and dice your competition with you. That's why I'm here. He says, oh, that's good. That's good. We can do that. We can do that. Oh. Do you know who Paula Zahn is? Paula Zahn, Good Morning America, CNN? Oh, yes. you, I guess you guys a while back did something about the Dixie yeah, Chicks? A little, a little bit? There's an anchor that works for CNN, Paula Zahn. And uh, years ago, she was working for a local uh, news station in her little town. But she was angry because she could not my potential. That's not her potential, right? She's like, where I'm at currently, where she wanted to be, right? So she goes, I want to be national, not local. I don't, it doesn't matter to me that people in my little town know about me. I want everyone to know about me. But CNN, get, uh, they get over 10,000 applicants a month that try to apply for that job. How do you stand out with 10,000 people vying for the same job. So she went to the dollar store, she bought herself an inflatable globe, she put it in with her resume, and she says, I want to bring the world to your station. She got the job. She got the interview, then she got the job. You're going to see me on Good Morning America, man, because I take massive, sick levels of action in my company. Between my administrative assistant and myself, we call 250 clients a day. Every single day I'm on the phone. I'm just constantly, I'm just calling the next one, the next one. Each conversation lasts anywhere from three to five minutes, sometimes. And um, I'll be like, hey, Dave Canigliaro, can you meet me for lunch? Can you, can you, <laughs> I just had a 12 o'clock cancel on me. It's 11.45, can you drive across town? No, Dave, I'm sorry, I can't meet with you. I'll call, I'll call, up, I'll call up clients all day long and try to land them, land them. Just constant, just sick levels of action. I called Good, Good Morning America because I want to be on a, I wanted them to do a segment on, a, on what I want to do for the youth. See, because I've been successful and I want to give back to the community. I want, I wish there would have been, I wish there would have been somebody like me when I was 18, 19 years old that would have said, listen, do this and you'll have this. You know, don't be like everybody else. Talk to strangers. How many of you were, how many of you were told when you were growing up, don't do this, don't do that, stop, put that down, uh, every, you've been told that your entire life, right? By your parents? They still tell you that, right? So we've been indoctrinated. We've been indoctrinated by our parents, teachers, the community, neighbors. Stop. Don't do that. Put that down. Be careful. Be careful. Oh, don't get me started on being careful. Be dangerous, right? You want to be dangerous. I mean, I take sick, dangerous levels of action. I called, I called Good Morning America. I said, hey, I want to do a segment on 
uh, a guy who goes into public schools and uh, he wants to talk to the youth about possibly becoming great entrepreneurs or giving them, uh, giving them some tools necessary to get what they want in life. You know? They said, oh, you're going to have to talk to uh, the such and such director. I said, great. Well, they, she said, we'll have them call you. I said, no, no, no. I want their number. What's their number? Oh, I'm going to call them right now. They said, uh, well, you know, we normally don't, we'll, we'll have them get in touch with you. I haven't even talked to that department yet. I said, well, are you busy? Can you talk to them right now? Because I've got time. I've got time. You know, I'm like, oh, oh, you know, this takes sick levels of action. Guys, um, we're going to do an exercise right now. I think you're going to enjoy this because this is all about you, really. Uh, uh, let, take out a piece of paper. Paper and pen. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Post notes, fine. That'll work. Just don't lose it. All right, guys, we're going to do a little, we're going to do a little exercise. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. All right. Okay. Okay. At the top of the list, you're going to write the word goals. Okay? You're going to write the word goals at the top of the list. Okay? Now, I want you guys, these are your goals, okay? So I want you to try to make a list of goals that you have for yourself, dreams that you have for yourself, stuff that you want to do in your life, okay? And I'm not just talking about immediate, you know, in the next few months. Goals that you have in your life, one through 10. Try to, try to come up with 10. 10 goals. Maybe you want to start a family. Maybe you want to go to college right after this. Maybe you want to be an actor, actress. Maybe you want to be the next hip hop star. Maybe you want to play ball. Maybe you want to be a ball player. Maybe you want to star in commercials. Of course, we're back to acting again. Maybe you want to start the next Fortune 500 company that will set the world on fire. A few minutes. <coughs> Maybe you want to be a movie producer. Maybe you want to start the next social media thing. Facebook, the, new, the next Facebook, the next Twitter, the next, the next Snapchat, the next, um, you know, whatever. All right. Do we have at least five yet? Yeah, I have five. Got five? All right. All right. We, everybody got at least five? Okay. All right, a few more seconds, 30 seconds. Whatever it is, dream big, this is your list. Anything you wanna do, any, anything you think you might wanna do. Maybe you wanna, maybe you wanna be a, a martial artist. You know? Maybe you wanna learn a new language. Maybe you wanna learn how to play a new instrument. I don't care, these are your goals. All right, all right. All right. All right. Next, uh, the next exercise. Next to that goal, I hope you've given yourself a next room, uh, enough room on that line. Put a number next to that goal. Okay. Like for example, if you think it's going to take you a year, one year to achieve that goal, put the number one. If you think it's going to take you three years, put the number three. If you think it's going to take you ten years, put ten years. If you think it's going to take you longer than ten years, put ten plus. All right, so next exercise, okay? Next exercise, are we all, we're set? We're set? Next to that number, okay, if, if you got enough room, if, if not, just make a new line. Um, what will you have to do to get to that next step? Okay, what's step one in this goal? 
What's step two? What's step three? For example, if you wanted to be an actor, who do you have to talk to in order to make that dream happen? What casting director would you have to talk to? What producer? What audience can you get in front of to make that happen? You're going to be the same person you are today five years from now except for two things, the people you meet and the books you read. Everything you want in life, the answer to it can be found in a book somewhere. Somewhere. But we get, we get so bogged down with our problems, though, that we just focus on the problems and we don't even think there are solutions out there for us. We always look for the next political messiah to come along to, uh, to save us. There's got to be at least one man or one woman that can get us out of this mess. But we never think we're the solution to our own problems. Okay, guys, uh, who, who's bold enough to, to share at least one goal that they have for, their, for themselves? At least one. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, after undergraduate school, I want to become a social worker. Oh, great. That's great. Yeah, we need, we need, we need good social workers. We actually need good social workers, too. We need great ones. Yes, sir. Uh, make a leg and awesome music. You're a musician? What do you play? You, you play an instrument? You sing? Uh, <laughs> who, would you, who would you have to talk to in order to get that dream to happen? I can imagine record people or something like Record that. execs, producers. Would you need an audience? Would you need a... F you know, it's funny about the, uh, the music industry has changed so much. It's almost like you need an audience first before you, they'll even build it yeah build it build it they make you work they make you work now years ago it used to be easy it used to be oh i'm on the radio i'm making millions you know now it's yeah that's good uh, I, want, I want to be able to be a, well not a vet but like a vet and you know how certain states that they have um, animal protection but over here oh yeah control, yeah uh, i want to do that for over here so. how long did you give yourself to achieve that 20 plus? <laughs> Think it's going to take you that long? Yeah, because not a lot of people are, are really down for like, Even people over here, like, uh, I talked to one of the officers over here, and he was like, that's not going to happen. I was like, I'm going to try. Let me tell you something, you know, and I, and I hear you. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, I used to, uh, you know, I'm buying a house right now, right? So, um, my, uh, the, uh, the lending bank, you know, the lender, uh, loan officer, you know, uh, this guy I call and, uh, and I said, hey, uh, my name's Dave Canigliaro, I want this uh, property on such and such. And uh, he says, uh, okay, well, all right, Mr. Canigliaro, the, uh, the rates are 3.95% uh, and, and I stopped him. I said, just, just so you know, I'm talking to 10 other institutions right now. Ten other lenders right now, and I, but I really, I'm really pulling for you. I really want it to be you that gets my business, but I just want you to know I'm talking to ten other, ten other banks. And he's like, oh, I, most people only just talk to one. I said, not this guy. <laughs> so you talk to as many people as possible to get what you want done fast, right? Who do you got to talk to? How many of them do you have to talk to? You know, how many times do you need the door slammed in your face? I'll give you an example. I went to uh, the, de the Department of Transportation and Highway Safety, the DOT. I called this guy every week for six months before he would meet with me. Because I knew that that, that account was going to be worth $50,000 a year to us. So it's worth me to make one phone call every single week to, to land this client. I call, I'd call him up, his, uh, the, the gatekeeper, the, uh, the secretary. She would answer the phone and she'd say, DOT, Department of Transportation, Highway Safety. I said, let me talk to Terry. They said, Terry's busy. I said, well, put me through anyway. Well, he's in a meeting. And every time you call, he's going to be in a meeting. I said, don't, don't do that. I said, just put me through. I just want to talk to the man, you know? Come on. So I called every week. Finally, I get a hold of him. He picks up the phone. It's the quickest conversation. He goes, Terry, this is Terry. I said, Terry, Dave Canigliaro, I want to come in. He goes, I'm not interested. Bye. Hangs up the phone. I call him right back. I said, hey, Terry, we must have got disconnected. He says, I didn't get disconnected. I hung up on you. 
I said, well, I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt. Listen, I want to come in. I want to show you what I have to offer. He goes, I'm not interested. Hangs up the phone. I called him every week for six months. Finally, he picks up the phone on the last, the last week. He says, hey, Dave, uh, what happened to you last week? I didn't hear from you. <laughs> and uh, he was laughing. He goes, listen, you got the job. Anybody as persistent as you are, uh, I know we can count on you. Just come on in. You got the job. You know how, he goes, all we have to do after that is just work out the details of the numbers. Simple. Got a friend of mine, J.R. Griggs, goes to my church. He's an uh, advertising guy, marketing guy. He was trying to get a job with EA Sports, do the marketing for EA Sports. And, uh, but can you imagine how, how much competition's right there for EA Sports, right? Especially their marketing. So he had to stand out. He's like, how am I going to stand out amongst my competition? What he did was he put a blow-up doll inside of a box and mailed that with his resume. And it said, open immediately. There's a hot chick inside. She needs to breathe. The guys called him at EA Sports, the executives. They said they were laughing on the phone. They said, JR, this is hilarious. This is, you got the job, man. You got the job. We're, we're, anybody this creative trying to get a job here, you're hired. We got to be creative. We got to market ourselves. Whatever you want in life, a stranger has. Don't lose your drive. Don't lose your passion. Stay committed to what you want. You know, let's, let's engineer these goals real quick. Who's got another goal? I don't care what it is. Yeah. I said I want to own a, own a clothing store, like have my own clothing store, and name it Essence 16. Okay. Do you do you design clothes? No. Do you want to design clothes? Yeah, but I want I, I want my own. I don't want to like actually sit and do it myself. I want to take my to do it. Okay. Okay. Do you want to own one store, or many stores? Like I want my, I want that one store like everywhere. Like you know how shiny. You want to have a chain. Everywhere. You want to have a chain. You want to be in malls. You want to be in. Malls. Okay. 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 Um, what would be your first step in order to make that happen? Do you think? I thought I was gonna find somebody that knew how to design clothes. Okay. Okay. You know, there's a lot of people that would tell you not to leverage debt. Okay, don't take on debt. Most of us are going to go into debt anyway as soon as we get out of get out of school because as soon as we go to college, we're gonna have college debt, tuition debt. And uh, don't, don't be totally afraid of debt unless you're really bad with debt, okay? Now hear me, if you're bad with debt, okay, debt can strangle you, okay? But some of us know how to leverage debt, okay? Some of us are kind of wise with debt, okay? I'll give you an example. I know this is gonna be a little controversial, but hang with me, okay? I wanna talk about Donald Trump for a second, okay? I know this is a little controversial, but hang, hang with me, hang with me here. Um, Donald Trump, knows how to leverage debt. And what, he mean, what I mean is, he'll get a loan from the bank for, you know, however, hundred mil million. He'll take that money that he just loaned, he'll put it into a Trump Tower, okay, where there's condos that they're building, okay? Now he understands that he's, you know, borrowed hundreds of million. The rent's gonna be coming due, though. Now, the, he gets a little bit of a grace period, okay? They're gonna, they're gonna say, okay, you got six months, uh, 90 days to six months before the rent is due, before that payment number one comes in, and it's going to be a big one, you know, before that payment's due, you've, you've, uh, so now he knows, I've got about six months to get renters into my building, or buyers into my building. So he hires the uh, leasing company to get these renters into these buildings, and as long as he can get to that 30%, 30% occupied, the building's 30% occupied with people living there, as long as he gets to 30%, he never spent any of his own money, okay? They're paying for it. So after he gets past the 30% mark, now he's making profit. But that's, a, that's an interesting way to think about debt. I'll give you an, another example that's a little less complicated. Um, you, let's say you borrowed a couple of million dollars because you wanted to own a car lot, okay? So you gotta get a bunch of cars on your property. You've borrowed a couple of million dollars, you got all these cars on your car lot, but now you gotta sell them, okay? If you can sell 30% of your inventory, you'll never have to uh, spend any of your own money, okay? So these are interesting ways to leverage debt, to think about debt, okay? Not all of us can do that. There's a lot of books written on this, how to be smart with debt, wise with debt, how to uh, never have any of your own money on the line, use the bank's money in order to make you wealthy, right? It can be done. It can be done. I know, I know a guy that, uh, you know, speaking of uh, the music industry, he, uh, uh, he, he took a loan out from the bank uh, just, to, uh, just to make himself famous, right? 
I mean, thousands and thousands of dollars because he believed in himself so much that he says, man, if I could just get the audiences, I will throw myself into this and I will make this happen. You know, I'm not going to mention his name, but, uh, you know, he did it. He did it. Guys, how am I doing on time? Are we? Yeah, we got about 10 more minutes. Oh, great, great. Let's do five. Guys, I got a couple of gifts here. These are gifts. Um, I sell these at my seminars. I got a seminar business that we do. This is, um, this is keeping your customers addicted to you. Now, but, but here's the thing. All of us are in sales, like I said before. If you're in a relationship with somebody, you've sold somebody on being in that relationship. If you want, if you want to learn how to negotiate, get what you want in life, how to triple your income within days, this is the CD. I'm, I'm, I'm giving, I only got a handful of these because I've... All right, all right. All right, I only got a handful, but I'll, I'll give some Rock of these away. No, <laughs> this, this, will, this CD, I spent six months putting this together, okay? There's so much practical stuff that you can do right now immediately, okay? Yeah, right. It's an audio CD, okay? I know a lot, a lot of people don't like to read books, so we put it on audio. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the rules for success. If you want to be a millionaire, the tools are in here. And I don't care where you start from. I got a YouTube, I, this, uh, one of the YouTube videos that we put together, it said how to start a successful business if you only had $100 to your name. Right? From day one. Day one. Right? Guys, uh, but I only have a handful <laughs> to give out, man. But I, I should have, you know, I should have brought more, but, you know, I was handing them out the first, second period. Um, guys, this has been, this has been great. I'm, uh, I'm proud that you guys are you're graduating. I know a lot of you are going away to college, which is awesome. But remember, next time you go to get a job, bring them a gift. You know, can I tell you one thing that, uh, did I mention this in this class? I don't know, it's all running together. There's a guy called me up, guy called me up uh, a few weeks ago and he said he, he wanted a job. He says, uh, Mr. Canigliaro, I wanna work for you. I said, well, I'll make some time for you. He goes, yeah, yeah, let, let's make some time. He goes, I've seen all your YouTube videos. I know how you think and I know how you are. He said, the best thing I've ever heard somebody say to me, it was music to my ears. I hired him right on the spot. This is what he said. He said, you know, I was thinking about what I would say to you if I ever had the opportunity to meet you. I said, okay. He said, I'm going to, this is how this is going to work. I'm going to make you six times the amount of money than you will ever have to pay me. So therefore, I work for you for free. I said, you got the job. You got the this guy came in to ask me for a job, and he says, I've seen your YouTube videos. I know how you think. Um, I will make your company six times the amount of money, more money than you will ever have to pay me. And therefore, I work for free. Man, if you go into a job interview like that, whoever you're talking to, the hiring manager, the boss, the owner, the CEO, the CFO, whoever it is, you go in there and you say, I will make this company six times or five times or four times or twice the amount of money that you will ever have to pay me. You can get that job. You're going to get that job. You, are, you will stand out head and shoulders. You will get hired immediately. All right, guys. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm out of time.